So let's talk about this alleged forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, and you know, most people's different versions of the Bible, most of them begin with this story. God created Adam and Eve. God created a garden. And in this garden, you can have any fruit and any vegetable except for this tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. It had a beautiful, probably a very delicious looking fruit on there. And he said, don't eat off of that tree because you know what? That tree will make you wise. It'll make you a God. And that's a sin. You cannot have this knowledge and you cannot become a God. So if you do that, if you eat that food, you will surely die. Okay. <laughs> so how long would it have been before someone to eat the fruit? Well, obviously it wasn't that long because in this story, the woman whom they call Eve, she got tempted. A snake came in the garden. Now, rather, this is a metaphorical snake or her, you know, her mind. It is unclear and it's basically left up for interpretation. So she has this inner dialogue. So that's that's what I'm going to call it. And this inner dialogue said, I think you should eat that fruit. It's going to make you wise. It's going to make you know things. It's going to make you have the knowledge of God's or become a God. Who wouldn't eat the fruit? <laughs> but there was a rule. You will die. So at that point, you've been told that death does exist. That you are now in the illusion that your life is temporary. Okay. When they were born, they were born with no memory to any prior lives. And they thought that this was their, this was the only life. This is all they knew. So they were born very susceptible to any knowledge at that point. Kind of like we are. We're born. We don't know anything. We Most of us don't have our memories. And everything we take on is something taught to us, something told to us. So they were told they would surely die. Eve took the fruit, ate the fruit. It was good for food, meaning she liked what she tasted. And I don't think she regretted it either. <laughs> but Adam, Adam was an NPC. He was stuck into the program. And he's like, no. But then she was like, come on, just, just taste it. Take a little bite. And of course, Adam, he loved Eve. What good relationship would it? Love your spouse and support your spouse, right? He took a bite of the fruit. Immediately he knew he was naked. <laughs> they both knew they were naked. <laughs> and they got dressed. After they get dressed, God or whatever that was proposing as God at the time in this story, it's like, why are you got clothes on? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> and Adam's like, this woman you gave me, <laughs> she gave me the fruit and it was good. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm laughing because the story is funny. And, you know, a lot of people have a lot of faith in this belief, in this Bible, in every word that is written in this Bible. And so, like, when you wake up out of the illusion, you begin to see that you're like, wow, was I really that gullible to believe all this stuff? Okay. But the reason why I want to talk about this is because this whole story <laughs> relates to, it relates to, I guess, an experience I've had in my life. I am an advocate for plant medicine. 
I am an ayahuasca enthusiast, okay? And I'm talking about sacred plant medicine, medicine that is infused with knowledge and spirit. I mean, all the plants have spirit and consciousness, but there are certain plants in this reality that will help you become conscious of the truth that's already there, help you conscious of knowledge. Uh, it'll show you that you are a God. So that's why I think the story is like really hilarious. And I didn't think about this till recently. When she bought that fruit, she knew she was God. And I think about many people who choose, takes the sacred plant medicine ceremony, ayahuasca, many of them realize that they are God afterwards. And once I realized, it was just like, oh, I'm telling it's. I'm happy. It's been amazing. It's the best shift of my life. I can't even imagine not knowing this information. And I actually came by this knowledge before ayahuasca, but ayahuasca, she just showed me even more, affirmed it even more. And so I began to think someone told someone once commented on one of my videos about ayahuasca saying, this is this is no different from the garden. You ate that forbidden fruit. And it, and I started to think, if there's a, tr a tr plant, which is natural, that is growing there, and if so-called this God that you believe that's outside of yourself created this plant, why would he put it in the yard? And why would he put it right there in your grass to eat it? Would he know that we have a natural curiosity? Okay. If this, if you were born here with no, with amnesia, no memory to anything else about life, why wouldn't you want to access memory or truth? Why would anyone want to stop you from having knowledge, <laughs> knowledge of good, evil, or any type of knowledge? Why in this story is it, does it say, the day you bite off of this, you will truly die? <laughs> So here's my theory about the whole death thing, if you like. I know like this whole Bible thing, you really can't trust it because it's been interpreted so many times. It's not even the same as the original text. And when you really do your research and start and find out where the original text came from, it like blows all of this whole story, like the credibility of the story out of the water. But I'm just going to go by this story because a lot of people have faith in this story. And so... Why would someone not want you to know the truth? Why would you surely die? So my theory is that this is not, death is an illusion, okay? This is not a physical death that takes place. But humans that agree to come into this earth reality, gods, this, let me correct myself, creator gods who wanted to incarnate as a human in the earth creation wanted to have their memory away so that they can have this experience, so they can experience life, you know, struggle, good times, bad times, experience the contrast between high and low, dark and, and light, hate and love, you know. This is an expansive experience for a creator God to come in and to see what low frequencies look like. And it actually experienced them. But that was the point. Don't find out your God, right? But once you find out your God, the experience ends. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't end like that. It's more like the idea of you being just a human, that surely dies. Okay? That's the death. So like everything, like I say this over and over again, you have to forget everything you ever knew about death in order to understand it. OK, so I'm just saying theoretically, OK, that this is, you know, people take the Bible and have all kind of little meanings. But I'm saying theoretically, the only thing that really died that day is the belief that they weren't a God. And, you know. 
Is it the same as, I definitely think it's the same as plant medicine. I feel like whoever wrote that book probably was talking about one of these psychedelic um, sac- um, sacred plant medicines that awaken your mind to the truth. See, these little things are like Easter eggs in this reality. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to learn this. I don't want to use drugs. It is drugs. There's, I don't want to use drugs. This is not a drug. This is not a low vibrational food. This is a part of this experience was put there for us. These are like these little, like I said, these Easter eggs that kind of help us out. You know, plant medicine really helped me really embody becoming one with the earth, one with nature, you know. And to the human mind, it is a forbidden fruit. But we are not human. We are gods. We are creator gods. God manifested in human form to have multiple experiences. And ayahuasca is a is a is a spirit, an entity, a being, a guardian, you know, a soul, a god like you and me who wanted to co-create experience for those who are called to it. And, you know, rather you choose the human route and you don't want to remember that you're a God and you don't want to bite the fruit. You, You don't have to because some people came here for a different experience. Me, if you're like me, you can handle the questions, the wondering. I knew there was more. I knew that I couldn't remember who I was. I often felt when I was young, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, who am I? Where did I come from? And like I, that question was nagging for me. I could not let that go. And, you know, I tried to go into the Christianity belief system. I tried to conform to those things. But truthfully, I I could feel too much. I knew too much. You know, I trusted. I I had intuition that was strong. I had feelings that was strong. I was drawn to my truth. And religion, nobody can take you away from your truth. And your truth is the only truth that matters. When you're having your experience, you're your own creator. And so it's okay to experience co-creating with a plant. It's okay to experience not co-creating with a plant. Those are just thoughts that's been on my mind. The the whole, you know, (laughs) Adam and Eve thing. You know, some of those stories or metaphors in the Bible, you know, they, they, of course, they're going to reflect in this life. And, um, Anything is that people relate to. We are all connected. And whatever the stories, whether they were fake or not, the stories turn out to can turn out sometimes to be like metaphors or parables in a person's life to kind of help them. You know, if the Bible is the only thing they're looking at. Right. Because when I was in religion, they wouldn't let me read anything else. If the Bible's the only thing you're looking at, of course, your spiritual guides are going to guide you to messages in it that might help you in your life. Me personally, I really had to let go of it. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't knock it for people who feel they still need to refer to it and stuff. It's just something, it's a hurdle that I had to climb that I wanted to let go of it to embrace more of my true self. (laughs) And thank you guys for watching. Peace and love. Namaste. And sign up for my email list if you haven't done that already so we can stay in contact. Take care.